Cervical disc arthroplasty is a surgical procedure that is performed on the cervical spine for patients who have either nerve root compression or spinal cord compression and who indeed have a disc space that is really worth saving. The purpose of the surgery is first and foremost to decompress either the nerve roots or the spinal cord. Uh, the uh, second purpose of the surgery is to actually provide a replacement for what has been removed, that is the disc itself, using a technology that will actually preserve motion at that level rather than depriving a patient of motion at that level as occurs when one performs a fusion. This actually involves transforming what used to be two bones into one bone. So instead of having the C5 vertebrae and the C6 vertebrae, you'll have the C5-6 vertebrae because the motion has been eliminated at that level. This is very effective when it comes to relieving the types of symptoms that are associated with either disc herniations or bone spur formation. Very effective, but it comes at the cost of eliminating motion at that level and also comes at the cost of increasing the motion at adjacent levels that are attempting to compensate for the loss of motion of the level that has been fused. And it is this increased motion which is thought to represent a source of increased stress at the adjacent levels and is also thought to contribute to accelerated degeneration and perhaps disease at adjacent levels that has prompted the development of this technology called cervical disc arthroplasty. The approach for cervical disc arthroplasty is identical to the approach that we use for anterior cervical discectomy and fusion. In both cases, we need to access the anterior aspect of the cervical spine. The process of addressing the disc herniation or addressing the bone spurs that may be compressing the nerve roots or the spinal cord is also essentially identical. Where the procedures differ is with what happens next. In cervical disc arthroplasty, instead of inserting some sort of a spacer, be it bone, titanium, and subsequently a plate and screws that will eliminate motion, a prosthesis is inserted, uh, and this prosthesis is constructed of metal or perhaps a metal polyethylene uh, composite. And the purpose of this is to actually preserve motion at that level rather than to eliminate it. The advantage of the motion preservation that is associated with cervical disc arthroplasty is that it preserves the motion at the level itself and is not associated with production of excess motion at the adjacent levels. Therefore, it has been demonstrated that patients who undergo cervical disc arthroplasty rather than anterior cervical discectomy and fusion are likely to require not only fewer surgeries at the same level which has already been operated on, but are also less likely to develop symptomatic adjacent segment degeneration or adjacent segment disease, which may require further surgery. These surgeries are generally performed for patients who have developed nerve root compression or spinal cord compression from either disc herniations or from what we call cervical spondylosis, which is actually arthritis involving the cervical spine. For patients who have cervical root compression or spinal cord compression and are wondering if they are candidates for cervical disc arthroplasty, they should call my office at area code 585-342-2410 for evaluation.